legitimacy of a sitting head of government in a democratic system derives from his or her ability to command the confidence of the majority of the members of parliament. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. I take note of the Attorney General's statement issued on the 25th of June in which he offers the opinion that the Agong can only act upon the advice of the Cabinet in calling for a session of Parliament to take place, citing Articles 39, 40 and 43 as well as other precedents. I accept these articles are consistent with the normative practices of a constitutional monarchy and parliamentary democracy. Let me add that there is a more fundamental principle underlying the application of articles and precedents to our current situation in Malaysia, that of legitimacy. Legitimacy of a sitting head of government in a democratic system derives from his or her ability to command the confidence of the majority of the members of parliament. If the government has no legitimacy, then it is frankly a waste of ink and breath to talk about any other article of the constitution other than those which pertain to re-establishing legitimacy. If, as we see taking place today, the laws are being used to sustain an illegitimate government, then we, the elected members of parliament, sworn to uphold the constitution, must draw a clear line. The question of legitimacy is not a theoretical one. The PN government's legitimacy has never been affirmed from its moment of inception according to the proper mechanisms provided in a parliamentary democracy, namely the tabling of motions of confidence. This puts the Prime Minister and his cabinet in a precarious position. In order to govern with legitimacy, including the seeking of royal decrees, they must affirm their majority support in parliament. If not, then there is no more accountability and the nation may be subject to tyranny.